There we go. Don't know if you want a dynamic mic or a condenser. Um, how do you intend to use it? Do you want something <coughs> that sits right in front of you, like this? Can you see that, guys, in the microphone? So if you're working away, you've got a mic that sits right up close like this. Um, I don't like that because it's a little bit too close. Sometimes it gets in the way of the screen, depending on how you position it. It's very close to the keyboard as well. And also, just trying to work and play around it, I find that. I mean, I use that. That's great for doing voiceovers when I don't need to uh, play with the keyboard and stuff. But when I'm actually playing a game, I use... Uh, can, if I wheel that in, can you see that? Wheel that out. No, it's on a big boom arm up here. Just hang on. There you go. <laughs> I prefer it like that. Um, that's a that's a condenser microphone. That is a what do you call them? Hypercardioid, which is a bit more directional than that other one that you saw. And the advantage of that, although you'll get better sound out of something that's really close up, and it it helps getting it close up to you helps get rid of all the room sound behind you because it picks up your voice a lot louder and clearer. So there's more contrast between that and background noise. Uh, the disadvantage of one right in front of you is that it gets in the way when you're playing. To me, you might not find that a, an issue, but uh, I prefer one up there. Uh, you do pick up a tiny bit more room echo, so you need to work on that if you go for one that's further away. But dynamic is going to be close up. Uh, with condenser, you've got the choice of close or a bit more positional. So it's uh, there's a whole lot of questions to answer decide what the best mic is and I've tried out loads of both you live in an apartment so the sound comes from left right and back so you want to be close to the microphone then I would guess uh, the closer the better the downside is it, it can pick up every bit of mouth noise as well every squelch and click and squirch and the, the grunt and every little bit of noise so uh... <laughs> Road is an Australian company, uh, Mobile One Kenobi. Road microphones have a distinctive sound. Can't reach my. I've got a Road Procaster, which is a good dynamic mic and good for the price. So that is one I'd probably recommend. It it is quite heavy in the bass. It's got a tiny little boost in the bass that's built in, and it adds a little bit more boom to a voice. And if you've got a deep boomy voice anyway, it can make it just a bit too much. It's not my favourite microphone for that reason, but it is a very good uh, dynamic microphone. you got a mechanical keyboard. How much sound absorption do you have set up in your room? Panels or the curtain roof? I do have curtains on the windows over there. Um, I've tried in the past those little 30cm by 30cm ridged foam tiles. They help a little bit with higher frequency uh, sound reflections they do help a little bit that so it takes a bit of the flutter away it doesn't help with bass sound reflections which i have had trouble because you get a reflection off the desk as well so the best things i have found and i've made these myself after watching a youtuber called booth junkie he's called booth junkie he's a voiceover artist he records in a sound proof no well, not quite soundproof booth in his home that's not quite the right way to call it but a treated booth in his home and he showed me how to make these panels, which are four foot by two foot out of home fiberglass insulation. And there I've got two mounted on the wall behind the monitor and two up on the ceiling that you can't see. And that's all I use now. They're far better than those. They're cheaper to, to make, a bit more awkward to mount, but they work wonderfully. And they help with all the base reflections as well. So they've, they've made the best difference. Um, I, if you want to look it up, then find, uh, it's called Booth Junkie. And if you do a search on YouTube for Booth Junkie DIY sound panels or something like that, you'll find them. And that's that's entirely what I'd recommend. For that, for the for the treating the room. Otherwise, if you've got a small room, just fill it full of clothes and blankets and anything soft, and that'll have a similar sort of effect. Depends how much of that you want to catch on camera or if you can avoid it. That guy sounds like an audiobook voice actor with the booth. That's exactly what he does. Um he does uh he does who work for the New York Times? It was one of the big newspapers in America. He um, he does the... He basically reads it out, records it. And so for their blind readers, if that's the right word, he, um, 
He produces a lot of recordings for that. And he's done lots of other voiceover work as well. Here we go, Raider attack. And they're coming on my undefended side. Not a problem. I've not been paying attention to the game. <laughs> I've been talking about microphones and crap. I've meant to do some videos on microphones because it's a topic I've spent so much time researching and testing out myself that I really do need uh, to put my advice into a video, I think. Here they come. Oh, come on. They're coming over the river. Guys, there's no point sitting in those towers. Get out. Everyone, get out. Get over here, quick. You can sprint if you double tap the... Uh, the mouse but it doesn't always work right here we go we've got some people arrived which is really good we've ambushed them in the water but unfortunately it's a ford so they can stand and shoot back <laughs> if you can get them when they're swimming it's brilliant look at our dogs going in as well the rest of the villagers are turning up now we've lost a few we've lost four but we we won that so the walls will help, and so will the towers. In fact, we'll build towers around the gate, but towers around this ford as well. So it will really um, give them a pain to get across that river. You see one video for my mic, the snowball one, my first mic. Yeah, the snowball is, it's, a, it's an all right one to start off with. There's a better one than that because it's cheaper. The snowball is something that you can, it's a USB one, so there's no extra setup. What's the better one? I think it's called something like a Samson CU... No, it's not a CU1. There is a Samson microphone that YouTubers do use. It only costs about £30 or £40. It is both USB and XLR, so you can use it with USB to start off with, and if you ever progress to getting any sort of specialist audio equipment, you can still use it on that. It's a dynamic mic. It's good, clear sound quality. It's a great price, and that's the one to start off with. It's called different names depending on whether you're in Europe or the USA. So where you are in the world, I have no idea what name it goes under. I think it's called the Samson CU1 or something. Is that right? I'll have to try and look that up. Or is it an, is it an ATR2100 USB? Look that up. ATR2100 USB. Because that sounds something about right. Oh, Booth, oh, you're a, you're a sound engineer? Sam, that is awesome stuff. Booth Junkie just explains the techniques. So the acoustic engineers like yourself are used for many decades. Almost no professionals waste money on sound dampening mats for hundreds of euros when you can build them yourself for pennies. Yeah, that's true. Uh, over in the States, where Booth Junkie is, um, the fiberglass insulation he uses, which is Owens Corning, and I forget the number, um, isn't available over here in Europe. So I, I looked up something of the same sort of stats and got some of that. But I imagine anything will do. The thing is, through, I did a bit more research on it. And the key thing of that is you want something dense. So it uh, absorbs like the base a bit. But not so dense that it reflects everything as well. And just trying to find something of the right density is a bit more of a challenge. But um, yeah, it, for the effectiveness, it's, it's way more price effective than going on little, little uh, foam ridgy mats and other things should you just get a gaming headset so two headsets in your budget 7.1 surround and noise cancelling mic i use um the kingston hyper hyper cloud x2 hyper x cloud 2 which is really good if you're going to be broadcasting with it the mic is clear but it's very quiet and it's just a feature of that and it's to do with the software and the drivers for it that is almost impossible to to work around you need to you need to boost it if you're broadcasting in obs which can be done but, um, I mean, it's clear it'd work. And if you wanted to, depends, depends how much you want to go into this. If you just want to test it out, test the waters with streaming or YouTube, it would do the job. So, um, but yeah, if you're just testing things out, then you don't want to spend an awful lot of money on any sort of equipment until you know exactly what you want and what you want to do. And, uh, how are we going to build a wall past that? Can I get it so it does fit in? <laughs> Let's do that. There we go. All right, let's chop down that tree just there. So, Saturn, what sort of um, what sort of work do you do? 
acoustic engineer. Is it, um, do you do work with music recording or studio recording of other work? Do you tell me more? I'm interested. Headset mics are close to untunable. That's why you want to stay away from headsets. Well, the USB mics, um, they're quite effective. Like I said, I'm sure it's an ATR2100 USB. In fact, in fact, let me just, I'm going to hit pause on that and just have a quick check. Let's see. Because, um, i bring that up here. Yeah, that works. Is this the one? Have I got the name right? It's not even typing. That's a good stand, isn't it? We've got caps on. Whoops. 74 quid? Well, that's that's one. That's that's a decent mic, I think. But that's not the one. It didn't used to be 20. It didn't used to be that price, if that's the one I'm thinking of. I'm sure. That's it. Samsung Q2U, was it? Yeah. Right, that is it. That that's it. Let's see what that price that goes for. Sixty nine quid, really? A lot cheaper in the US. It's called a Samsung Q two U, and that's the one. Is that oh, that comes with headphones? That's why it's that price. I'm sure that was it, and I think you can. I think that's the USB, and I think that's the yeah. It is USB and XLR. I'm sure. Yes, it is. So if you can find one of those without the headphones. Um, that is a really good mic to start off with because it's got XLR and USB. You can upgrade your audio equipment and still carry on using that. And it's a good one to start off. It's a bit like a lot of dynamic mics, a bit sort of, um, what's the word, boxy. A lot of them sound a bit boxy, but uh, as I say, it'll be clear. And that's that's one of the key things you need. Yeah, that's what I use satin. I use mineral wool. Um, I forget the brand. I think it was maybe earth wool. So I used that to do the loft out with. And sadly, I didn't have enough left to do the um, panels, which would have been really nice. We've got that. Uh, we've got that wall chopped down. Sorry, that we have. We've got that tree chopped down. Let's build another wall along here. Got tons of stone. How close can I get to there? That looks good. We want to get as close to that river edge as... No, we don't. We want people to be able to walk along the river, don't we? Oh, balls, is it? Yeah, go on, add that in. It's going to look a bit rough and ready, is this? Because I'm building it around things, which could easily be moved, but... What does that look like? Yeah, it's kind of snaking in the right place. Put that in the middle. Can I fit one in? No. Okay, we'll, we'll have to move those anyway. Let's get that along there. <laughs> it doesn't like going in long distances, sort of snaky lines like that. It's a bit weird. Is that going to miss a bit out? I thought it would. Yeah, put one more on the bit on the inside. It likes you to build in straight lines as this, but it doesn't matter. It's going to connect it all up. And then we just... What we will do... I mean, we can move those things anywhere. Which we probably should. Let's get them shifted, our tanners. I put those two in there. Tell you what, that'll do. And let's recycle those. And then let's just cancel that. And then when it's cleaned up, we'll join that wall up a bit better, I think. Don't dynamic mics need an audio int mixer interface? That one doesn't because it's got USB. So it'll go straight into the back of your computer. Uh, any mic, whether it's condenser or dynamic, if it connects via XLR, it'll have to go through an audio interface or some sort of preamp um, to get in there, to get in, so you can get the sound into the into the um, computer but if it's got usb then it means it's got its own built-in preamp or interface whatever it needs to be able to talk to the computer and get the sound through sound over usb isn't always worse than the sound coming through a um interface 
It depends on the quality of the components in there. That's just a cheap mic, but it's it's good enough to get started with. Do we need any of this? I can go all out and spend... Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can get brewing by trading for the technology. This is going to be expensive. But, I mean, we have stuff to trade with. I mean, we have all that grain. I could use all the grain. Oh, hang on. This has got commission high. I'd have to go for 450. Jeez, that's going to be... Uh... I'm going to use all my wool. Hmm. Copper bars are worth a bit. Is that really worth it? I've got... I think it is. Because I've got so much grain. Can we afford to do this? And I've got linen clothings and outfits. They're worth quite a bit. Yeah, let's do this. Let's this gets us a basically a free technology. So, although I'm going to get RSI on my finger from, can I not do? Oh, shift click to trade multiple. I thought there must be a way of doing that. Brilliant. Ten at a time. Let's let's keep a little bit, but we've got bread and flour and tons of other food in stock, so we're okay. It's hard work watching the stream, watching footy and getting a nice tanker at the same time. <laughs> well, you should do like me. Instead of doing one thing well, you should do lots of things badly at the same time. More fun. Um, let's see. Can we Our flint tools are not very useful anymore. We can get rid of a load of flint knives. And some of those. Keep a few, just in case. Bone spear. Get rid of our... Flint spears. Need another 49 so we can get rid of. We're trading some of these linen. No, I'll get some of the wool outfits. <sighs> oh, no, not that much. <laughs> Don't want to shift click. That would be stupid. And then nine more. What should we trade? Bones, I guess. Yeah, I think bone. We're not making a lot of stuff out of bone anymore. There we go. So we've got. Brewing, which effectively means we can save our technology points for something more important. Well, not necessarily more important, just something else. It's winter, so those linen outfits are what they'll wear in summer. They will, but I, I should have enough. Yeah, I've got 124 in total, so... Oh, hang on. Wolf attack. It's dead by the time I get there. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got more linen outfits than I have population. I've said it so it makes... Where's my weaver? That the weaver, the outfitter. I've got them set to make 125% of the population value in each outfit. So it gives me some fresh ones for new people. And also a few spare to trade with. That was the idea. And I think I'm all right for linen. Yeah, I've got plenty of linen cloth. So we can manage with that. Once again, I've got a lot of cattle. Let's go and find the old cattle and slaughter them. There we go, there's one. I like the way how the game lets you tell the old ones. They just look a bit old and grey and haggard. What the hell is that? <laughs> An aurochs ready to come across. Oh, I'm tempted to get a hunting party out. What are we in? Spring. We better get the fields planted, especially as I've used up all the grain. Oh, there's one. Slaughter that. Oh, hang on. Just noticed our wall isn't joined up there. And nor is it finished. We're not out of stone, are we? Let's just put that to... Um, high priority. And also... I must have missed that off. Join that up there. Is that not going to... Is that not going to join up? For some reason. That's annoying. That's not going to look right, is it? Well, well, if it's if it's gonna have to be, doesn't look right at all. Why is it doing that? Is it because it's on a? <laughs> is it because it's on a slope? It could be because of the slope. Sometimes the game gets a bit funny about putting structures on that there, but that will work. <laughs> it's gonna look weird, but it will be joined up. It's not quite what I wanted. 
Never mind. I might need more knives to help with slaughtering. I've got in total... You're right, I'm a bit short. I thought I had more than that. You can slaughter with axes. Uh, it's probably not quite as precise. But that'll do. Do I still have my crafter? I've got a ton of flint, so... Yeah, stop building... Stop building these. And... Bronze knives would be better. I'd take that off, actually. Where are my two blacksmiths at? We've got bronze. These are set to... They are set to make more of them, so... They'll get to work. They'll get to work making knives. I'm sure. Why are you thirsty? Go and get a drink. Cool, we've got this stuff done. Right, let's build that wall across there. Um, let's do that. Nice, that's what we wanted. Let's get these trees chopped. Population is approaching the limit. Guard towers on the water edge. Yep, we're going to build some guard towers. I'm, I think I might have to move this storage hut at some point. I think. So I can fit them in. And also, that house is probably going to have to go. I think what we're going to do is just build some more houses over here where we have space. I wasn't sure what I was going to use this area for, but I think it's going to be storage and houses by the looks of it. As long as we don't build things up too close to the wall, because then um, it's a bit it's a bit weird how it handles this. Like, I've got a guard tower there. If I put something r right next to it, which it will let me do, then the guard tower gets destroyed. When I come to rebuild the guard tower, it won't let me put it back there. So we do need a bit of space. Maybe slaughtering with axes is preferred for dealing with old people. I'm sure that works as well. <laughs> How's that working over there? Excellent. That's built up here. We're also going to put... This is one of my plans. A dolmen. Just on top of the hill. It look, I think it looked pretty cool. Just there. Now we need to find... Some more... Megaliths. I did see a load together somewhere. Here we go. Right. Go and mine those. It seems to be a, a rather nice fertile valley down here. With all sorts of things. Can the wall go into the water? No, sadly not. You can sometimes build it like a wooden palisade along one of those bridges. Um... But the game doesn't really handle it very well. Sometimes it doesn't allow it at all. I did manage it once. I'm lost. There we go. Um, but then, it's, yeah, it, it just doesn't seem to work very well. Oh, we've got enough knowledge for... We'll go sword making. And what we really want is bows. We've got a lot of bronze coming in. Oh, I should have traded those copper bars because I'm not using them. Let's add bronze swords to the list. Can we build another blacksmith in here? Or oh, metalsmith, rather. Yes, we can. We have two. Go on, then. We'll have all our metalsmithing down this side. I don't think we can build any more of those, can we? There we go. One of those in there would be quite useful. Yeah, we can. So we're getting quite a nice looking little settlement. It'll look nice when I get some, uh, some guard towers put up. We better make provision for that, actually. What was I doing with this? We need more houses. Let's go. Oh, I can build round houses now. Cool, I can get these things up upgraded. Well, that's 
fit in there? It'll fit in there. Yeah, let's do that the proper way. That'll do. Three of those. Chop that down. And on the other side, we're also going to build... Oh, two big stone warehouses. We have them facing each other. Uh, no, for some reason. But I can have it facing the other way. Must be to do with those entrances, I think. Trade has turned up. Do we need anything? Oh, well, I can take horse domestication, but I think we've I think we've burned all our, our goods for trading. For now. Maybe take that tin ore. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Hey, G-Man. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for asking anyway. What are you up to today? Or what have you been up to, should I say, before you join the stream? So we've got 17. Let's trade some of those copper bars. And a bone. Or a flint. Should I give them a flint? Are those two male cows? No. We've got one male there. We don't need so many of those. We'll just have one lucky lad who gets the job. So we can slaughter him. Oh, there's an old one. Slaughter her. Too many males, I think. Yep. Get rid of some of those. 20 cattle. And yet it is enough to keep us in in leather, so it's working well. Just chilling. It's supposed to be seventy degrees today. Gonna to enjoy some sun and a book later. Nice. That does sound does that sound pretty good. How do I get tech points? Is there a special building? No, it's not like uh, other RTSs. You get tech points um, literally by doing stuff in the game, which I really really like. Like if you build five of the same building. You get tech points because it's like your builders have thought, oh, hang on, we've built enough of these now. We've learned how to do them better. Or we've learned, you know, the process of it. Um, for killing f five aurochs, you'll get a tech point. For chopping down five trees, I think. And also for just for gathering lots and lots of stuff. Like it goes up, there's like, I think it's like five, 10, 50, 100, 250, 500, 1,000 of each individual resource. You might have seen one of the notifications pop up earlier. Uh, you get a tech point for that. So just the more you do stuff, the more your people learn about how to do that job. And I really like that. That's a nice way. It's not like you, you have something that you set away researching for you like you do in modern games. A wall has a hole in it. <laughs> Look at that. I'm going to get that finished. I wouldn't have thought anything could squeeze through that, but uh, apparently it can. So yeah, I really like that uh, aspect to it. I think that's a that's a cool cool way of developing technology. Speaking of which, let's get a hunting party out because our people can do with a hunting trip. Let's go and get these things hunted down just for fun. We want bring in the mob. We'll get this wall finished as well this winter, I think. <clears throat> Damn, wolf attack? Where? There we go. Acquired bronze knife times 10 plus one knowledge. So, yeah, just for just for working on stuff. People, go and get the wolf. You'll do. Kill it. With fire? Now, they had a little hunting party here as well. Someone who's got upset because they're hungry. Just walk past a load of stuff to shoot. Let's get that as well. This helps. This this really helps being able to see what there is to kill. Nice. We've got a couple of things there. Not what I went for, but we will. We're going to go have a hunting party over here. I like to do this manually. I like to send people out, control what they're hunting. It's a bit of fun as well. Oh, there's a limping sheep. Kill that. Get him, get him, before he runs away. Now, aurochs are a bit different because <laughs> the big ones will turn around and charge you. Like, oh, well, we've got one. Go and get some more. Ah, they're all running off. Huh, okay. Oh, I see, they're just gathering up. I've got three guys going for it now. Yeah, come on. 
And someone else will come from the village with a, with a sledge and pick up the meat and stuff. It's, uh, it's a bit of fun doing it this way. <laughs> 